uh, by reading a poem by a Hazara uh, named Fresh Sabasan, or otherwise known as Fresh Poetry. You say, the shape of my eyes don't look the same as yours. Of course not. My eyes are the shape of almonds, a softer touch on the outside, but hard to break on the inside. My eyes don't shy away from fear. They're shaped like roads because my eyes, like my grandmother's, have never stopped moving. My eyes are the shape of boats carrying decades of history, the stories of my grandmother's and their grandmothers sailing through waves of Afghan while other sailors float by claiming to know our origin, further trying to disregard any of our roots in the land that you claim is only yours. My eyes don't see the same sea that surrounds us. You see shore, but I see the sky that reminds me of my grandmother's blessings who fought against the same large brush that painted us all as Afghan. See, my eyes don't look like yours because my eyes have drowned many who deny my existence. Now, I'm not saying I'm not Afghan, I am, but I'm not the same Afghan as you because when I say I'm Afghan, I include the decades of oppression and persecution that my people have faced and continue to do. See, I carry double seven and Ghazni. I still see Hazara genocide, and not only physically, because they have also tried to kill us verbally. I remember Mushkhor and Chinese. I hear the jokes and see the smirks. So when you, see, when you say just Afghan, you ignore our lived experiences and histories. Yes, my eyes are like those of a lion's, fierce, but also recognizing unity. My eyes will still look at you with love and compassion because that's what my grandmother taught me. They may see us differently, but you never look at them separately. You're from them and they are of you. We all have the same place as we call home. Yes, yes, you enjoyed. Next, I'd like to address some points to the Afghan community in the diaspora. We're often taught that Hazaras are a minority group in Afghanistan, and that includes myself and many of my Hazara peers that were taught the same thing in our communities, but that is not true. Hazaras have not been minority group, but they have been forced to become a minority over the course of a century due to the genocidal campaign started by Abdurrahman Khan. There are reports that show that ha indicates Hazars were once the largest and vibrant population in Afghanistan, but were reduced to 20% of, of it um, ever since the Abdul Rahman Khan's genocide in 1893. Ever since then, there have been countless attacks directed at Hazaras that were either carried out by Taliban regime or by different political parties and other, ter other terrorist organizations. And that includes genocides in Mazar al-Sharif in 1997, direct attacks in Bamiyan, destroying arts unique to the Hazara history and culture, and the most recent attack in Dasht barchi a predominantly Hazara populated district in Kabul. The oppression against Hazaras has had both religious and ethnic underlying reasons. And this not only happens in Afghanistan, but also in the neighboring countries such as Pakistan and Iran, there's been many attacks in Kuwait, Baluchistan, in Pakistan on Hazaras, as well as the borders of Iran and Afghanistan. Ironically, while Hazaras have always been excluded and denied the Afghan identity within Afghanistan, they are labeled as Afghan as abroad, specifically for their visible features to justify the racism and discrimination they experience in Pakistan and Iran. Resistance is not a new concept to Hazaras in Afghanistan. We have always tried to speak up and resist various tyrant regimes throughout history, but have constantly been silenced by our non-Hazara community and the government. Hazaras have always made efforts to define their rights and freedom as Afghan citizens, but unfortunately never received the same care and protection as other Afghan citizens from the government or much of the diaspora. And some of their activists include the Hazara Power Line protest in Kabul a couple years ago, where the government ordered the security lockdown just to shut down the demonstration and provided minimal support and protection that put them at a high risk of suicide attackers. Denying the genocide and historical persecution of Hazaras that continues to happen to this day only undermines the unity movement. 
because we cannot come together as a united nation if we do not recognize and acknowledge each of our ethnic history that will include a generation of oppressions by individuals, groups, and systems very sim similar to the Taliban's ideologies today. Some of the example of this dismissive behavior towards Hazaras has happened in the past couple of weeks in Australia and Canada, and I'm, not, I'm pretty sure some of you may have come across to it in the social media, where an eight-year-old Hazara boy was shot down after mentioning the Hazara genocide in Australia, or when in Canada they had canceled on many of the Hazara speakers. At the end, a message that I'd like to give to the Afghan diaspora is that if you were able to learn about the various injustice and racist systems in the countries you're living in and can speak up for your black and brown friends, you can and must put the effort to recognize the Hazara genocide and stand up against the racist political institutions within Afghanistan. Denying Hazara genocide, deny, denying Hazara genocide and saying it doesn't exist erases our trauma. Saying it, all, saying it that all ethnic groups have suffered equally in Afghanistan is like saying all lives matter to the movements such as Black Lives Matter. <laughs> Non-Hazara Afghans must recognize their privilege and just because you don't see and feel the racism in Afghanistan, it doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. It does exist, but it's because it, does, it is not directed at you. Your activism and fight for freedom should be inter intersectional and inclusive of all different lived Afghan experiences. Because while we are all Afghans and have suffered together in a war-torn country, we certainly do not face the same level of oppression. There should be a place where all voices are uplifted, particularly Hazaras. I hope that as we move forward, there will be more discourse within the Afghan diaspora that discusses and validates what we as Af Hazaras face and experience day to day. Thank you.